show her boner. No, boners. Bouquet of boners, a veritable cornucopia. Shut up, I know what I'm doing. Yes, your instincts. Go with those, that'll be funnier. You're attractive. Ah, I'm, oh no, I'm sorry, already. For that, to be clear. Any refills here? Hello, what I mean to say is you're very attractive. You are, of face, and the rest, the whole party. Hi, my sorry is because how I bet you hear this all the time. This exact thing? I bet not. Stop it, I'm doing great. Uh, and I imagine that the time that you hear this and you get stopped, for which adds up a lot. And that must be inconvenient because everyone likes time. And I'm sorry for being another one of those wasting your timers, but it's, it's, it's your fault for being so attractive that we should date. So we're gonna get me out of here. Okay, everyone, thank you for coming. Unfortunately, Daniel's been called away to a charitable event. Impressive veneer. Can't tell if she thought you were joking, rejected your advances, or didn't even register anything you said. Yeah, they'll do that sometimes. Hey, you made some solid eye contact. Okay, really you good. never hit on a woman on the clock in the service industry. It's immediately uncomfortable because it's part of her job to pretend to be nice to you. Also, don't focus solely on looks because it makes most women feel like objects. And a woman being attractive? Not her fault. Oh, but you know what that reminds me of? Creepiest? Cause me? Aw, just mostly. You know, I've been thinking about this a lot lately though. On the spectrum of bad guys, most people are worried about like the sleazy pickup artists, the obvious douchebags, but I feel like romance movies have created a far more dangerous type of creep. The guys who confuse big gestures and relentless stalking with real emotional connection. In Can't Hardly Wait, Preston doesn't know anything about Amanda, and yet he just decides that he's in love with her and then spends the next four years obsessing over her so that he can pounce on her the minute she becomes available. Amanda and I are connected. Do you know who Preston Myers is? And sure, Lloyd Dobler gets Diane Court in Say Anything because they're meant to be together, but before the happy ending, this is just a guy with martial arts training aggressively following a woman who has repeatedly rejected his advances. But he does the boombox. The old ones, those are heavy. He shows both physical strength and sensitivity in one move. Oh, you know what? I thought I didn't want to be with you because you had absolutely no life plans outside of being with me. I want to be with your daughter. I'm good at it. But then you blasted that song that was playing the first time we f***ed right at my window, so I guess you're mature now. We're creating an entire generation of Ted Mosby's who thinks that chasing a woman is the same thing as getting to know her, and that unsolicited, unreciprocated romantic gestures earn you points that will someday be traded in for sex. That's nowhere near as bad as Twilight, which, yes, I only watched because I thought it would help me win an argument. But no, not about this. Team Jacob? TJ for life! I am hotter than you. But my point vis-a-vis -vis this is that the tweens, or twadolescents, or whatever we're calling them now, still hold up Twilight as their be-all, end-all romance, and it's terrifying. The first movie has a vampire fall in love with a girl, and they both immediately commit to each other forever. I dream about being with you forever. In the second one, he decides he loves her so much that he's going to kill himself to keep from hurting her. Meanwhile, she constantly puts herself in danger, knowingly, because it's the only way to get his attention. And boom, got an entire franchise based on the mutual belief that love has to include constant threat of attack or suicide. Nah. If we're talking about dangerous romantic gestures, I feel like every high school movie should be immediately stricken from the conversation. Uh, I'm sorry, are we not actually gonna help me court this waitress? I need tips. Yeah, don't use the word court. There's your tip. Soren, you were contributing? Yeah, uh, high school movie romances should get a buy because they're just trying to be authentic to how high school feels. You're just surging with all these hormones that are out of control, everything is high stakes. It's, it's just art trying to reflect that. It's why Romeo and Juliet and all of its descendants have to be about 14 to 15 year olds because that's the only part of your life where you actually feel that idiotically and dramatically about romance. That's probably the best word to describe it. Oh, so suddenly it's idiotic <laughs> to kill yourself Cause you just met the love of your life at a party and you barely know anything about them. Yeah, that's just a play about assholes. Young, dumb, short-sighted assholes. Signed, Shakespeare. Asshole. I always thought that running to stop someone from getting married at the last second was the creepiest one. Preach it, sister, banging on the glass, causing a whole scene, that's the worst one. Here's a road tested, committed couple and they're just gonna split up because some guy's good at giving dramatic speeches? Yes, exactly. 
the popularization of the don't marry that guy move. No! I'm just asking you not to marry him. Stop this! Stop this now! What is love? Basically, fundamentally misunderstands the whole point of a relationship. It's not about those big moments. Yeah, the guy wins her over with some speech, but a relationship's about those tiny, like, intimate moments. You know, the ones where you're just sitting around the house together. You have to like being with someone, even when they're not giving you some big, grand, romantic speech about how awesome they are. My wife used to fart when she was nervous. She used to fart in her sleep. <laughs> Or do like me and hold out for someone who only communicates in speeches about how great you are. You know, every movie that does that don't marry that person speech, they borrow that from The Graduate. The only movie that accurately shows what actually happens to a couple after that part. Hello darkness, my old friend. The guy comes and does the thing. She says okay, and they run off together, and then they realize they have no idea what the hell they're doing with their lives. It's the key moment in that film, but all of the movies that are inspired by it, leave it out, because it's a downer. That's not the worst part of the wedding interruption trope. Sure it is. Can you hear Soren's speech? Soren, do it again, but hold up a boombox. Okay, when a man swoops in and steals a woman from a wedding, that's perpetuating the idea that a woman doesn't know how to decide for herself who to be with, that she's just waiting around for some guy to win her over that she should have picked in the first place. Yeah, and it's never a woman who gives that speech. In the majority of movies where it's a woman trying to steal the groom, by the end, she just ends up with some single guy at the wedding instead. Mm -hmm. Rom-coms assume that women just randomly attach themselves to guy until some other guy comes along and runs in and says, hey, I know that you're wearing a really expensive dress and all of your friends and family are here and, you know, you spent so much goddamn money on this wedding and you and the groom have, you know, really gotten to know each other, but I'm here giving a big dumb speech about love, so trust me, you know? And the woman's always like, oh, you know what? You're right. See, I thought I was supposed to be with this strong man, but it turns out the whole time I was supposed to be with a different strong man to set me straight. Thank you, Owen Wilson, or whatever, probably. That was really me. And this is only in chick flicks, movies that are specifically aimed at a female audience. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we keep being fed over and over again at 12 bucks a pop. Poop. That's bad. Bad like shit. Hey, waitress is coming over again. You want to give another shot? Oh, no. I'm sure I'd just say something insensitive because movies. Sorry about movies. I'm, I'm sorry about the world for you. See, I actually need a water refill and there's no way she's going to come over here now. Hey, Internet. Thank you so much for watching our After Hours about creepy romantic gestures. I have a bunch of things that you can do. You can go in the comments and tell us who you agree with. Who do you think won that argument? What creepy romantic gestures did we leave out? Which one of us is tallest? And which one of us is, like, emotionally tallest? Also, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking somewhere and check out the first four seasons of After Hours somewhere else. And know that we come out with a brand new After Hours every single every, month. all, every one. The show's never been canceled once. We've never not done it. We come out with a new show every single month. Just watch. <laughs> just, just, just you watch. watch. <laughs> just, I bet just you. See. You want to bet? I bet you. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube.